Hey, this is Hansi from Blind Guardian. You're watching Heavy Talk. A voz de Deus está conosco. Olá, seja mais uma vez muito bem-vindo ao Heavy Talk, o canal favorito do brasileiro, fã de rock e heavy metal. Hoje para um vídeo super especial em que eu entrevistei pela segunda vez um dos maiores ídolos da minha vida, que é o Hans Kirsch, vocalista do Blind Guardian. O Blind Guardian está vindo para o Brasil no final do ano para seis apresentações. Dia 18 de novembro no Circo Voador no Rio de Janeiro, dia 19 de novembro na Autêntica em Belo Horizonte, dia 21 de novembro na Ópera de Arame em Curitiba, dia 23 de novembro no Opinião em Porto Alegre e dias 25 e 26 de novembro no Terra SP em São Paulo. Shows da turnê que divulga o álbum mais recente The God Machine de 2022. Né, que eles estão vindo aí de volta para o Brasil poucos meses depois de ser uma das principais atrações do Summer Breeze. Essa banda ama o Brasil. E aproveitando, também vou divulgar alguns outros shows né, que nós teremos no nosso país em breve. Em setembro, teremos o Ghost, um fenômeno mundial que tem duas datas em São Paulo no espaço Unimed. Dia 21 de setembro, que já esgotou, e dia 20 de setembro, uma data essa que abriu um dia antes, esse ainda tem ingresso para você conseguir. Os dois shows contarão com a abertura da banda Cripta, então certamente serão noites incríveis. E tem também a turnê da Taya Turunen, Living the Dream, a eterna diva do metal, vai passar pelo Brasil para três apresentações. Dia 22 de setembro em Porto Alegre, dia 23 de setembro em São Paulo e dia 24 de setembro em Limeira. Garanto seu ingresso e nos vemos lá. E antes de começarmos nossa entrevista, eu preciso pedir sua ajuda se tornando membro do nosso canal. Por menos de R$3,00 você pode ajudar o Heavy Talk a continuar existindo por muito tempo. Nós precisamos que pelo menos um a cada 100 inscritos do canal se tornem membros e a gente está beirando aí esse limite de 1%. Então pense com carinho em fazer parte disso para a gente continuar trazendo conteúdos incríveis como este para vocês. Agora sim, vamos à entrevista, mas ó, não esqueça de ativar as legendas no player e ative em português, tá? Porque tem possibilidade de vários idiomas, certo? Bom vídeo a todos! Well, Mr. Hans, it's a honor to have you here. I'm a huge fan of Blind Garden and of your voice, of course. Thank you. And, well, this interview will go on air later, but at the mm -hmm. moment we are recording, You just participated in some awesome celebration on the stage of Vakken with Doropesh. That's How was good. that moment for you? It's been great. Uh, I know Doro for a long, long time, and I might have seen one of the first Warlock concerts ever. So um, I'm familiar with this stuff ever since the very early 80s. And um, obviously, I, I followed her career, and then we became partners in crime and it's great to see her rocking and she's a very tough lady i have to say and so it, it's been great to see her rocking uh Wacken yesterday and becoming a part of it that also was very important if we count the lucifer's heritage years your career will also turn 40 soon you think in yeah. any kind of celebration for that too <coughs> no um we more or less ignored forgot, did, did not see whatever, um, see any of the anniversaries. Um, we're not good in such stuff because we never thought in such terms. I've been asked a lot of times if I thought back in, in what, when was it, 87, 88, that we would still be rocking, you know, 35 years later. And I have to say, you know, I was 20, whatever, 20, yeah, 20 something, 21, and uh, 21, 22. So I didn't have any idea what 30 years mean at that point. So my my uh, view of the world back then was like, you know, we become famous very quickly. And I shared that with Tom and Marcus and Andre. There was no difference. We all thought the same way. So a decade was endless. It was half our life at that time. So even that you know, was something we could not really imagine. Nowadays, I have to say, you know, seeing how long our career is lasting already is a blast. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying the ride, I have to say. Nice. Uh, the God Machine came out almost a year ago and the feedback from fans and the metal press was incredible, especially because 
of how it sounds, bringing a lot of that trash metal of the first albums. After playing these new songs for some good months, how do you see the the latest record in the band's discography? I have to say it's still too early. Um, I We have had a good feeling, but I, I basically can say that about any of our albums, and they they all have their pros and cons. The impact The God Machine has is very big at the moment, and I believe it stays like this, and a part of it is related to the sound, and maybe to um, the straightforward direction we have taken on the album, uh, because otherwise... In, in many cases, this album is not too different from Beyond the Red Mirror or At the Edge of Time or Twist in the Myth. It, it is a, a modern approach still um, to do something legitimate to our legacy. And I believe that uh, the songs are very strong. There is a red line. Maybe that's what people um, recognize um, that the songs, even though they're individual, they interact very nicely. And so this makes it one of the more popular Blind Guardian albums at the moment. Um, I believe at the very end, and I, I think I said that during some interviews before, um, it is a try to, you know, or it is a, it is a new beginning. Um, we defined everything we wanted to in the orchestral direction with Legacy of the Dark Lands. Uh, Beyond the Red Mirror partly had been abused to guide into that direction. And now we're basically free to do whatever we want to do. And that probably is what people realize on The God Machine, that we're, you know, unleashed. And this is how it feels. And I believe this is how I will always recall the album. And not long ago, you were in Brazil promoting this album in the first edition of the Summer Breeze in our country, a big festival from Germany. Honestly, as a German who have already played a few times in the German Summer Breeze, did we have a good start? Oh, you, you had a tremendous start. But to me, the Summer Breeze is still um, connected to our... Uh, somewhere live appearances from last year the promoter asked us to to do the mm -hmm. somewhere stuff so um this is more how i recall the festival also and uh, when we come over in uh when is it november um this is where the focus will be more on the god machine yeah i i was really impressed and i've spoken to the uh, german promoters who had been um, visiting the festival as guests and they were also impressed because on one hand, and I share that, uh, they thought that um, the idea to do such format in Brazil or in South America in general um, is a very good step because people, exp the experience of such a festival is a bit different. And um, it, it was designed and planned very wisely i think um it was not built up too big and it was built up on realistic uh, expectations and from what i saw in the audience and fr from what i felt myself this is a very good beginning and i believe um that this will be an established festival in south america and in particular in brazil um very quickly the next one will be most probably a bit bigger even um it's a question how how big you want to go with a festival in general you know um i like the mid-sized festivals um which means anything between three thousand people and twenty thousand people that's basically where the blast is where you you feel the sincerity you can you can feel the spirit of a metal festival and um in this category summer breeze brazil is at the moment the german one is of course a bit big big uh, a bit bigger um question is if you want to go there or not but um the the format has been perfectly um built up in brazil another thing i would like to ask you about uh, is about your voice the prog power style is very physical for vocalists and if we look at the singers who are references in the style, many went through vocal problems. 
and some had to readapt or change their style. In your case, you're not only a reference since the 90s, but you still sound like you are in 95. Uh, such a visceral, powerful and unique voice remains very healthy. How do you feel and take care of your voice during all these years? Uh, I did not always pay attention. That is the dilemma I'm in in answering this question because I also did the wrong stuff. I took care very early, um, and you're right, that happened somewhere in the 90s. And, you know, I took my lessons, and I ever since do almost a manic warm-up, especially nowadays. Uh, it's sometimes the whole day I'm not doing anything else but smooth physical therapies to, to get the voice into shape. Um, I had to learn that all the hard way, also that talking and drinking is not really good for vocalists. I'm, I'm talking about party drinking. Um, there's nothing wrong with a glass of wine or you know a beer here and there or an ice cream that won't hurt you. At least it doesn't hurt me. But um, if, if you go into a pub and then have you have heavy talking with people and you drink, then this exceeds everything. And this is not good for the voice. Um, I basically am able with the age I'm in now to avoid that a bit or mostly. Um, so that helps me now. Um, it's a bit of luck, of course, you know, um, how the physical status is. And I have to say that even though my sinuses, for example, uh, is always bothering me, um, that also helped me in getting the breaks at the right moment because once I'm I'm really getting that cold to say so. Um, there's no chance in singing. If I'm on the road, of course, I do the singing and everyone will recognize because I sound like a piece of shit. But um I will I will make sure then that um afterwards that I get the rest I, I need to recover. And some vocalists may not have ha ha had that chance because you know they were on tour, they you know, they did whatever they did. And if you really waste your voice, it's hard to get it back. So I accidentally avoided that somehow. And you're a vocalist uh, who first started playing bass until the end of the Imaginations from the Other Side uh, tour. You recorded and toured playing bass. Uh, since then, the band has had some of the best, best players in metal recording and performing. <laughs> But uh, even after so long, those does bass uh, still have a special place in your heart? Uh, when a musician is, is recording bass lines for, from Black Guardian, uh, are you the one in, in charge of, I don't know, supervising maybe? No, I'm not. Um, my heydays in, in playing bass were really in Lucifer's Heritage and maybe the beginning of Black Guardian. That's when I considered myself to be more a bass player than a vocalist. And ever since, I did not pay too much attention to it. It was more a supportive job I did. Um, when we did Imaginations, I recognized that I was not able to, you know, compete with the other guys in on the instrument anymore. And um, that it was impossible to me to keep up both on the same level, the bass playing and the vocals. Geddy Lee is able to do that and some other Sting, for example, um, but if you do so many counter singing to what the music is aligning to, then, um, yeah, you, you need to be a, a special breed. And I'm obviously not that kind of guy. Um, I, I like bass. Bass is a great instrument. But I would agree on you, uh, on what you just said. Um, all the bass players we have had otherwise are world-class bass players. And I was I was decent at the, at, at the highest level, if at all. And um, I I like the style these guys brought in. They're all different. And of course, I've had my word on the one or the other thing. Um, but basically, it's um, mostly Charlie Barfind and uh, the individual bass player defining the direction. Of course, again, uh, as composers, Andre and I, um, control everything and uh, we both have different uh, um, interest in in the way a bass is performed sometimes but um, the, the main work and the main credits would have to go to the individual bassists and Charlie Balfant. 
And during the recording of the God Machine, uh, it was possible to see in the backstage uh, videos that there was a healthy dispute between you and Andre. Uh, both of you were challenging each other to compose something better, but always with respect and laughing about it. Uh, since the beginning, Blind Guardian score remains the same, and it's it's rare to see bands uh, that keep up the same lineup for so long. After almost 40 years, what has been uh, like to keep this, this friendship and professionalism in a positive way? The same vision, I would say. Um, that is very important. Uh a friendship, um, an understanding of yin and yang, basically, you know, um, th that whatever I'm reflecting, Andre may reflect the opposite, um, but both is necessary, you know, it's it's impossible, you know, to to just think in a black and white situation, you, you, you have to embrace both at the same time, you cannot divide it. And um, we we have found our way. Um, I, I think it's really the the strength in in every blind guardian member, and that in, includes Tom, who has had the same passion. Um, that we really shared the same dream from the beginning, and the same understanding. Of course, the the same origin also has something to do with it. So we, even though we're different, uh, we share a lot of same thoughts same humor you know it's how you grew up and how you you approach to think we we are not too different from many other people from our region i would say but you know it was coincident fate destiny whatever it was um we we met and we met up pretty well nice and when we talk about blind guardian Fantasy is almost a uh, synonymous, not only because of the lyrics and, and concepts, but how the band also is a soundtrack for nerdy moments in the lives of thousands of fans. In addition to being a source of inspiration and a creator of fantasy, you are also a fan of books and movies. How has your nerdy side been these days? There's, there's something recent that got you or you do uh, still prefer to revisit old things? I, I definitely love to revisit old things. I just bought a, I think, 130 years old version of the Elias. And once you have something like this in hand, you're just like, okay, I may have to do something about it. Saying that, this de um, demands the right song. And um, you, you just mentioned that um, there is that very narrative fantastical eye-opening for imaginations uh, rich kind of music we're having uh, which always also dictates a direction um you know i i always find things interesting like margaret edward stuff for example um would be nice you know like the the matt adam trilogy if we had a song like this, you know, um, because it, it needs to be a weird song. Um, there are always authors, old, new, uh, popping, popping up. And um, some may just, you know, open an idea, you know, in which has nothing else to do with the story itself. Or songs, for example, you know, the, the classic rock songs or pop songs one is listening to, like, you know, a, a great song for interpretation, for example, is American Pie by Don McLean. Um, if if you have a song like this, it it sometimes opens universes in what one would be able to do with lyrics and still narrative lyrics. Um, well, I am myself a hardcore fan of Blind Guardian, and there's uh, one interesting thing that I that can lead it to two questions. My first tattoo is a Blind Guardian tattoo that I did when I was 18. And my second tattoo is a Lord of the Rings tattoo that I made a year after that. Uh, mm -hmm. So first, none of you guys have apparent tattoos. That's a, a, a bit rare in, in a metal band. No, we are no way typical. I mean, what we're doing, we're doing with passion and it never appealed to any one of us. You know, we're not against tattoos. But 
it won't suit me. I mean, I have very very thin arms, for example. <laughs> so the the tattoo would fall off. So there is no need for it. And um, the other guys, including Tom, they always thought the same way. It, it wasn't really nothing for us. You know? Johan, yeah, right. But again, it's also a question of origin, where you come from. Um, I I don't identify myself with tattoos. I see a lot of people wearing tattoos, and I'm just like, okay, it's a fashion. That's not what tattoos are supposed to be. And um, this is why I'm not, you know, keen of getting a tattoo because it's it's not my ideology. It's not my way of thinking. Nice. And the the second one, uh, I love Peter Jackson's uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, can't say the same about the Hobbit trilogy or Rings of Power series, but I would like to know which moment of Tolkien universe you would love to watch in any audiovisual work. Uh, it's it spoils so much of the imaginations, no matter how good a movie is. So that's a tricky question. Of course, um, the fall of Gondolin would be great, but maybe uh, the biggest one I could imagine is um, is the battle between Fingolfin and and Morgoth at Tangoridim. Um, that's my favorite Blind Guardian song, anyway. But I also think that's the yeah, that's the most emotional moment in in the whole Tolkien universe in terms of you know bravery of you know it's beautiful and so i would love to see that but i also you know had no problem in seeing uh um the the exodus of the nodorian race out of the blessed realm like like in nightfall or you know the i don't know how it's pronounced correctly the the suffering in the Hekla Raksa, I, I really would love to see that. You know, I could imagine that these could be blockbuster movies, but as said, I don't even know if I want it to be. I if once it is created as an image, even though Peter Jackson did really great, um, especially on most on, on the fellowship, um yeah, somehow you haven't a picture in in mind which is probably not yours even though he was very faithful in the way you know he he's woven in what great painters has had done um yeah it, it still spoils a bit of the imaginations and therefore i don't know if i want it and taking a look at the bands online store and even researching old merch uh there are hundreds and hundreds of t-shirts with the most beautiful illustrations you are the kind of fan who enjoys wearing t-shirts from the bands you admire. But how involved are you in merch development and in graphic artists? Uh, do you like keep a copy of each release? No, I'm not that dedicated. I'm I'm a scatterbrain. So um, my recollection is not brilliant, I have to say. And my, my, my passion in collecting is also not... <laughs> that well established um i'm heavily involved in the um creation of graphics and uh the t-shirts but i'm doing them and then i'm happy that we have accomplished the one or the other and what i'm not good in is at least nowadays is judging which will be good sellers and which won't <laughs> in the old days it was really easy you know when we did uh, the imagination dragon guitar and everyone was happy and then then um, the graphic guys took over and did the t-shirts and everyone knew oh this is going to be a seller and and it was but nowadays it's so different sometimes the ones i really appreciate are the ones which yeah they are lame sometimes in selling and the ones i i think they are kind of too much they are the ones the people really like um but uh, it is one part of our job of course um there are bands like the old the very old school bands they don't have any connection to 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 the whole universe of the band to to the whole business which is uh, connected we slowly and early started being you know 
involved in almost everything. Nowadays, there are some bands like Sabaton, for example, they are really full spot on. It's it's like, uh, you know, 24, seven hours job for them in, you know, having everything under control. Um, we have a lot under control, but not that much. Got it. And there's a Brazilian metal band called Tuafa de Danan, which some fans here nicknamed as a Brazilian blind, mostly because of the fantasy and visual, visual elements. And also they are fans of, of you guys. Angra also has a strong connection with you since the collaboration in the Temple of Shadows album and the co-headline tour in 2007. And if I'm not mistaken, both bands are playing at 70,000 tons of metal in January. Uh, perhaps we have a uh, time for a, a new live version of Winds of Destination. But the question is, uh, you coming from a country that shaped power metal and being one of the main references in the style, how do you see Brazilian metal nowadays? I think it was always strong um, or, or very early. Um, German metal must have been or might have been there a bit earlier, but you know, imagine thrash metal without Sepultura. That's impossible. And um, you just mentioned our direct connection with Angra, but I know the guys ever since the early 90s. I, I visited some of their first shows in, in Germany. Um, we have been friend or we are friend with our old manager. We are friend with the guys. Um, there is a very strong connection in the music of especially Brazilian power metal band and German power metal bands. You could you can really feel that they are kind of the successors of what Blind Guardian or Halloween had been up to. And they established that into a direction which is suitable for the Brazilian culture. The Angra stuff is certainly different to what we are doing uh, because of the ethno um, instruments and, and um, aspects they have brought in. Um, this is what music is made for. You know, you need to somehow bring in your cultural spirit. And um, I, I see that perfectly and nicely um, accomplished in, in Angra. You know, it, or like, like Sepultura, as mentioned before, you know, all the albums they have done, they are like like the Slayer stuff. They are on, on the, the very highest level you can imagine. Hansi, thank you very much. And I hope to see you in Brazil in November. I'll for sure right. will be at at least one of the, the concerts here. Okay, at least one. At least one. <laughs> I count on that. You know, you will be the one. The front row boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice to talk to you and I hope to see Very you, nice talking to you again. soon bye bye I hope so take care bye bye Espero que você tenha gostado de mais esse conteúdo do Rev Talk. Se você gostou, é essencial deixar o seu like que vai ajudar no engajamento do vídeo. Também mande esse vídeo para os seus amigos que são fãs de Blind Guardian e vá atrás do seu ingresso para esses shows que vão acontecer no Brasil. Né? Certamente eu vou encontrar vocês em pelo menos um deles. E mais uma vez eu peço também que você considere se tornar membro aqui do canal e ajudar nosso trabalho a continuar crescendo. Hoje eu vivo desse canal em tempo integral e isso exige muita dedicação. Eu peço em troca que por menos de 3 reais você se torne membro, para garantir que o canal não acabe. Além de vários benefícios exclusivos que você terá por ser membro. Então venha fazer parte desse 1% que a gente precisa. Se você já é membro né, ou quer ajudar ainda mais ou quer fazer alguma colaboração espontânea e avulsa, aqui embaixo também está o QR Code do nosso Pix. E na descrição do vídeo, além do link para virar membro, tem também o nosso PayPal e o nosso Apoia-se. Qualquer valor mesmo vai ser de grande ajuda. Então, muito obrigado pelo apoio. Enquanto você estiver aqui, nós também estaremos. Por último, mas não menos importante, saiba que a gente tem outros dois canais que precisam também da sua atenção. O primeiro deles é o Heavy Cortes onde a gente publica os principais momentos aqui do canal e também do nosso canal da Twitch. Então, assim, os destaques que você perdeu é, por não assistir uma live completa na sexta-feira, né? Ou por não fazer uso da, da Twitch, onde a gente 
está ao vivo pelo menos duas vezes na semana, você consegue ver tudo isso lá no Heavy Chords. E também tem o Heavy Talk Underground, né? um canal voltado a dar visibilidade para bandas iniciantes ou que já estão na estrada há algum tempo com muita qualidade, mas ainda não receberam toda a visibilidade merecida. Não custa nada se inscrever nesses dois canais e também ajuda muito o nosso trabalho em divulgar nossas ideias e divulgar música pesada no Brasil. Os botões estão aí embaixo, é só clicar. Como eu disse, gratuito. Você não vai gastar nem 5 segundos da sua vida para fazer isso. Muito obrigado por assistir esse vídeo até o final. Vejo vocês no próximo vídeo e também vejo vocês na pista do show do Blind Guardian em novembro. Grande abraço e tchau.